Hello to you all. I am Tanya Pandey and I welcome you to Courts this week on Live Law. Before we begin today's segment, I'd like to take this opportunity to say that we are going through some painful and difficult times, but I hope that we can stay united and be there for each other. I urge you to remain calm and optimistic about the future and to take care of your own safety. Let us dive into the Supreme Court judgments from last week. A mandamus cannot be issued by this court for setting up an adjudicatory body or tribunal, the Supreme Court has observed. The petitioners had sought a direction to set up an independent tribunal comprising of retired High Court judges who can look into the claims of each parish church to determine which faction or denomination must have control over each such church. They also sought a direction to the said tribunal to hand over the management of concerned church to the denomination constituting majority or in the alternative to partition all disputed churches and their properties equitably. While dismissing the writ petition, the bench of Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and M.R. Shah observed that having due regard to the provisions of Articles 245 and 246 of the Constitution, no such mandamus can be issued by the court. Can a state, in the name of cooperative federalism, enact a legislation under the concurrent list to occupy the same field that the parliament has occupied? Asked Justice D.Y. Chandrachur. The bench of Justices Chandrachur and M.R. Shah was hearing the plea filed by the Forum for People's Collective Efforts, an umbrella home buyers association, challenging the constitutional validity of West Bengal Housing Industry Regulations Act 2017 which is more or less identical to the centre's RERA. In the last hearing, Justice Chandrachur had expressed that it was baffling why a state would make an act exactly similar to the central law. Justice Chandrachur propounded an interesting theory as regards the purport of a state government in essentially re-enacting the provisions of a central act as a state legislation. If it could be to denude the Government of India of its authority under Article 256 over the state. The Supreme Court on 20th April stayed the Allahabad High Court's judgment which directed the Uttar Pradesh government to impose lockdown in five cities of Prayagraj, Lucknow, Kanpur, Varanasi and Gorakhpur till April 26 in view of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Allahabad High Court had passed the judgment in a Suomoto PIL after making scathing observations against the UP government for not taking adequate preparatory measures to deal with the second wave of the pandemic. The UP government, however, refused to impose the lockdown in the five cities as directed by the High Court. A division bench of Justices Siddharth Varma and Ajit Kumar of the High Court narrated the grim situation of the healthcare system in major cities of the state and said that a lockdown was absolutely essential to ensure that the situation was not going completely out of hand. The Supreme Court has posted the matter after two weeks and has sought a report from the UP government on the steps taken by it in relation to the COVID-19 pandemic. Expressing grave concerns at the mounting vacancies of High Court judges, the Supreme Court has emphasized that the central government should proceed to make appointments immediately after the Supreme Court Collegium has cleared the names. If the government has any reservation over the Collegium recommendations, it should send back the names with specific reasons for reservations. Once the Supreme Court Collegium reiterates the names, the centre should make the appointment within three to four weeks of such reiteration. A bench of former Chief Justice of India, S.A. Bobde, Justices Sanjay Kishan Kaul and Surikant laid down the timeline and observed that it would be advisable to follow it. The Supreme Court has held that the power of provisional attachment of property of the taxable person under GST laws must be strictly construed, being a draconian power, and that the same should be exercised only on the basis of tangible material. The court was interpreting Section 83 of the Himachal Pradesh Goods and Service Tax Act. The bench of justices D. Y. Chandrachur and M. R. Shah, while allowing an appeal against a judgment of Himachal Pradesh High Court, observed that the exercise of unguided discretion cannot be permissible because it will leave citizens and their legitimate business activities to the peril of arbitrary power. 
consent of parties cannot obviate the duty of the High Court to indicate its reasons why it has either granted or refused bail, the Supreme Court has observed. The bench of Justices D.Y. Chandrachur and M.R. Shah observed that a court granting bail cannot obviate its duty to apply a judicial mind and to record reasons, brief as they may be, for the purpose of deciding whether or not to grant bail. The top court, setting aside the orders of the High Court of Gujarat, granting bail under Section 439 of the Code of Criminal Procedure to six murder accused who were arrested for their alleged involvement in five homicidal deaths. In the order granting bail, the High Court had recorded that learned advocates appearing on behalf of the respective parties do not press for further reasoned order. Disapproving of such approach, the bench observed that if this was a euphemism for not recording adequate reasons, this kind of a formula could not shield the order from judicial scrutiny. The Supreme Court has directed the High Courts to adopt the draft rules of criminal practice which have been prepared by Amici Curiae, Senior Advocates R. Basant, Siddharth Luthra and Advocate K. Parmeshwar within a period of six months. The High Courts shall take expeditious steps to adopt the said draft rules and ensure that existing rules are suitably modified within a period of six months, the Supreme Court has ordered. The Court further directed the Union Government and the State Government to make consequential amendments to police rules within a period of six months. The power under Section 482 of the Code of Criminal Procedure cannot be used to overlook the undermining of a statutory dictate, the Supreme Court has observed. In this case, the High Court allowed an interlocutory application filed by a company claiming to be an operational creditor to allow it to operate its bank account maintained with the ICICI Bank and to unfreeze the bank account of its creditors over which the lien has been created and the accounts frozen pursuant to the lodging of an FIR by the interim resolution professional. Before the apex court, the IRP contended that the whole purpose of the moratorium would be defeated if members of the previous management of the corporate debtor are left free to transfer the funds of the corporate debtor. The court noted that after a resolution professional is appointed, it is for him to conduct the resolution process and manage the operations though he is bound to seek prior approval of the Committee of Creditors in certain matters. The court noted that in this case, moratorium was declared and the assets of the company would include the amounts lying to credit in the bank accounts. Now it's time to look at the important High Court judgments. The Supreme Court has held that parties to a contract who are Indian nationals or companies incorporated in India can choose a forum for arbitration outside India. In this case, the arbitration clause provided for disputes to be referred to and finally resolved by arbitration in Zurich in accordance with the rules of conciliation and arbitration of the International Chamber of Commerce. Eventually, when the dispute was referred to arbitration before the International Chamber of Commerce, one of the parties filed a preliminary application challenging the jurisdiction of the arbitrator on the ground that two Indian parties could not have chosen a foreign seat of arbitration. This objection was rejected by the arbitrator, who continued the proceedings and passed the final award. The successful party filed enforcement proceedings under Section 47 and 49 of the Arbitration Act before the High Court of Gujarat. The Supreme Court disposed of the appeal, upholding the judgment of the Gujarat High Court. Referring to various Supreme Court judgments, which have interpreted Article 21 of the Constitution of India so as to expand the meaning of the right to life to also include right to health, the Madhya Pradesh High Court has issued a slew of directions to the state government. The bench of Chief Justice Muhammad Rafiq and Justice Atul Sridharan was hearing a Suomoto writ petition along with other writ petitions registered on the basis of a letter sent by Dr. Ashwini Kumar, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India, to the Chief Justice of India. The said letter highlighted a tragic and condemnable sight of an elderly COVID-19 patient who was chained to a bed in a private hospital at Bhopal. After that, the court had passed a number of orders to ensure that the COVID-19 patients in the state are provided timely treatment in as much as they are not subjected to harassment and exploitation. The matter has been posted for further hearing on 10th May 2021. The Nagpur bench of the Bombay High Court 
has passed pertinent directions to deal with the city's crumbling health infrastructure owing to the exponential surge in COVID-19 cases, specifically on the non-availability of antiviral drugs like remdesivir, oxygen supply and beds. The division bench of Justices Zede Haq and Amit Borkar passed the orders in a Suomoto PIL which it had taken up in 2020, soon after the coronavirus outbreak. The court directed the collector to ensure that doses of remdesivir injections are made available to even those patients who were undergoing treatment in non-dedicated COVID-19 hospitals. The court further requested the media and press to not highlight unfortunate incidents too much because it is creating unnecessary panic among the citizens. Given the current state of affairs, similar orders in the context of COVID-related resources have been passed by several other high courts as well. The Kerala High Court recently expressed dismay at the hardships and delays brought on by the Ministry of Corporate Affairs Central Registration System in processing applications for the incorporation of limited liability partnerships. Taking note of the predicament of the petitioner, whose application for incorporation was being delayed for various reasons, Justice N. Nagaresh remarked that the facts of the case disclosed a sorry picture of what could be described as a system-generated harassment. Tearing into the blemished and impartial investigation conducted by former IGP of Punjab Police, Kuwar Vijay Pratap Singh, the Punjab and Haryana High Court has given a clean chit to former Chief Minister Prakash Singh Badal in the Kotkapura firing case. The firing incident dates back to the year 2015, when during the process of maintaining the law and order situation, the police were stated to have fired upon the protesters at Kotkapura, where some police persons were seriously injured. One protester allegedly received grievous gunshot injuries and some other persons allegedly received minor injuries. The investigation was handed over to an SIT headed by Singh which submitted its final report against some police officials along with allegations of conspiracy with higher police officials and the higher political functionaries. Singh had alleged that there was a conspiracy between the then CM Badal and then Deputy Chief Minister the then senior police officers and petitioner accused. The single bench of Justice Rajbir Shirawat was of the opinion that Singh misused his official position to further his designs and indulged in theatrics and political manoeuvring. And therefore, the High Court has ordered for a fresh investigation into the incident and issued directions in that regard. With this, I bid you goodbye. I hope you remember to be extra kind to the people around you. Take good care of yourselves. I am Tanya Pandey. Have a wonderful day. Subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from Live Law.